You know, the truth is we all fall into some kind of category. Maybe it's nationality. You're an American. You're a Russian. You're, uh, you know, from Mexico. Uh, maybe it's gender. Uh, maybe it's the area, the country that you live in. There are all these categories. But you know, the Bible teaches that you fall into one of three categories. That's what the Bible teaches. Well, welcome. My name is Mike Rippey. I'm the lead pastor at uh, Banjil Church in Montgomery. I'm so glad that you joined me for this edition of the Fire Bible Study. Now, a lot of you are regular and a part of this. Welcome back. Get your notes out. We're going to be on lesson number four. This is premiering on January the 26th, 2022. If you're watching this at some other time, there are notes available that we'd be happy to get for you beginning uh, here at the beginning of 2022, we've started a study from the Fire Bible that is on spiritual formation. You know, New Year, we like to get our body into form, you know, take off some of that excess weight we put on over Thanksgiving and Christmas, and uh, we want to do certain other things uh, physically and health-wise. Well, spiritually, I thought it'd be a great time to try and get our spirit man, our spirit woman, if you would, uh, into a biblical formation, into the kind of form that God wants for us. So that's what we've been doing and will continue to do uh, for the first uh, several months of 2022. So welcome. Let's jump right into it. The Bible says there's three kinds of people, three kinds of people. Now, you're one of these. So this is going to be important for every one of us that are listening and studying tonight. Take your notes, get a pen or pencil out. Let's jump right into it tonight. Three kinds of people. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they're foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to to any man's judgment. A couple categories there. The Bible is going to give us three. So let's look at them. The basic categories divides human beings, not male and female, not Jew or Greek, not bond or slave, um, as uh, or free or slave, as the scripture uh, teaches, because we're all one at the foot of the cross of Calvary. That's, that's for believers or Christians. But we're talking about three categories of people on planet earth right now here's the first one write it in your notes those who do not have a relationship with god those who do not have a relationship with god there's a second group those that have accepted god's forgiveness and have a personal write that word personal relationship with him ideally these believers are completely submitted. Write that word in your notes. Completely submitted to God and with His help, resist the pull of human nature toward sin. So you say, yeah, Pastor Mike, I, I kind of understand that. Two categories. But, but there's a third. And this is going to be a warning, if you would primarily to those of us who initially would say, two, put me down as number two. I have accepted God's forgiveness. And I have a personal relationship with him. But the Bible goes a little bit further. However, number three, in the last group, the Bible does draw a distinction among those that have committed their lives to Christ and those that continue Write these two words in. Follow their own desires. Follow their own desires. So for the next total Bible study time of, of 30 minutes from beginning to end, we're going to look at, at what we might call worldly Christians. Now they don't think they're worldly. But what does the scripture have to say? And those that would walk that fine line dangerously expose themselves to the pull of the enemy, the pull away from God. 
My father used to have a saying, he used it in a lot of different ways, get in, get out, or get run over. In fact, I think it was the title of one of his great messages when he was an evangelist, get in, get out, or get run over. That's what we're really going to be looking at tonight. Those that got out, they don't believe. They're not receiving God nor want a relationship with Him. Those that are in, or those that get run over by the things of the world. So let's look at all three categories from Scripture. Let's dig deep into them and characteristics of each. And at the end of these next few moments, I hope you can say with confidence, I'm in category two. That's my prayer for everyone. Whether you've never received the Lord, that you move into that category, or if you've been flirting with category three, you sincerely and steadfastly move back to category two. I'm going to just show you my hand right now. That's, that's what I hope for all of us. So here's the natural, the unspiritual man or woman. Number one, the natural unspiritual person has not been spiritually renewed. Write that word in your notes. Or born again. That hasn't happened. John 3, 3, in reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is, circle the words, born again. So the natural and spiritual man or woman has not been born again. Number two, they're controlled by natural instincts. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 12, but these men blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like brute beast creatures of instinct born only to be caught and destroyed and like beasts, they too will perish. Now, if you find yourself in category one, God lovingly is telling you the truth right there. Letter A, this person does not have the Holy Spirit living within him, but lives under Satan's rule and influence. All right? So there's, there's no, oh, I love the big guy upstairs, but you live your own life. Romans 8 and 9, you, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Acts chapter 26 and 18. To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. I pray that that's where you are placed. And I hope our time together tonight, if you're in category one, will encourage you to take those steps. Letter B, natural and spiritual people continue to be a slave. We don't like that word, but write it down. Slave to his or her own passions, limitations, and desires. So the final two fill-ins are passions and desires. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature. Every one of us that's watching, participating in this Bible study, we've all been there. And following his own desires and thoughts, like the rest, we were nature of objects of wrath. We all were in that place. And any of you that are there right now, tonight can be the most important life of your night. Stick with us. For the next few minutes. Let her see. These people prefer friendship with the world. The world system. We as believers want to develop friendships with people in the world. The individual. Not the pattern of the world. But these people prefer friendships with the world and the ways of the world. Instead of friendship with God, making them enemies of God. You adulterous people, James 4, 4 says, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. And then letter C, those that are in category one, you don't have a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. The natural, unspiritual person rejects the ways of God and does not understand who God is and how he works. They rely on human reasoning, write that word down, and the emotions of the heart. And we see that all the time. The man without the Spirit, 1 Corinthians says, does not accept the things that are from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. 
And he cannot understand them because they are not spiritually discerned. So the spiritual man or woman. This is category two, and I pray that everyone, as we end this study tonight, will be firmly rooted in this category. Number one, the spiritual man or woman has been transformed. You don't just have a name written down on some membership roll someplace. You haven't just walked an aisle or lifted your hand. You've been transformed through a personal faith, a personal faith and relationship with Jesus Christ. And now the Holy Spirit lives, there's your fill-in, within me. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, Romans 8 and 9, but by the Spirit, the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, he does not belong to Christ. And the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who lives in you. So letter A. This person, write this in there, is spiritually minded and understands the truth about God. That truth that God has given and made available to all who receive the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I want you to read that on your own. Mark that. Come back to it. Letter B. He or she lives by the Holy Spirit's guidance. By the Holy Spirit's guidance. Well, what about the Word? Well, the Holy Spirit always lines with the Word. Always. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit, that's those in category two, have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. His guidance. So I say, Galatians 5.16, Live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Let her see. Because of the power, write that word in there, of the Holy Spirit living within the renewed man or woman, they are able to resist ungodly, destructive desires and overcome the influence, write that word in there, of their sinful nature. Your sinful nature is still there. So how is it defeated? By relying on the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now here's further distinction among Christians. Although born again Christians have received the new life of God's Spirit. And here's my prayer. Over the next few minutes some of you hear these words deep inside. Although born-again Christians have received the new life of God's Spirit, they still have the presence of the sinful human nature. Write that in. All of us that are Christians do. Still dwelling in us. It's not fully gone. With its pull toward rebellion against God. You need to see this, Galatians 5. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, and then he goes on to list those nine fruit. It's interesting, and I'm not going to name names, but I just read a long expose on an individual. He was a conservative evangelical leader at the heights of uh, of influence. And yet, he didn't believe in kind of the guidance of the Spirit. Oh, he believes in Christ. But he just brought worldly aspects into his life. First, quietly, where no one under his leadership really would know. 
It affected his marriage. affected his own personal life. He ended up losing the entirety of the influence and power that uh, he had. And I mean power to do good things. I was totally stripped of it all. And then I find myself teaching this. He would fall into category three very, very clearly. And the cost of it. And what will be the ultimate cost? Well, let's, let's look. Number one, the, the condition of worldly Christians. Letter A, for this group, sin and rebellion did not fully control their lives, nor had they been involved in the immoral and ungodly behaviors that would completely separate them from God's kingdom. Yet, letter B, they were having in such a way that they were no longer growing in their relationship with God. They were behaving in this way. Oh, this isn't an ultimate sin. I'll partake of this. I'll be involved in this. Oh, you, you know, as a Christ follower, there's grace. You really don't have to, to do this part. How, how far does that, and it is wide, swath of God's grace go? it certainly stops them from growing in their relationship with God. Brothers and sisters, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. And that doesn't mean you're newly saved. It means you've never grown out of that. And babies are cute for a season and heartbreaking. If some physical uh, issue causes them not to be able to grow physically or emotionally or intellectually, it's heartbreaking. That's what we're describing here as Paul writes the church at Corinth. They were a church, but they were found with such worldliness, sexual activity, drunkenness, um, degrading, if you will, the Lord's Supper, all, all of those things. Mere infants in Christ, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. Number two, the dangers for worldly Christians. Letter A, these worldly uh, Corinthian Christians were in danger of being influenced to abandon their devotion to Christ. There's, there's the ultimate concern. Paul writes back in a second letter to them, For I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere, pure devotion to Christ. He's saying, you can walk away from Christ. He don't want that for them, and I don't want that for you. Number three, the warnings to worldly Christians. Letter A, worldly Christians must realize that they are in danger of losing their faith if they are unwilling to turn from all that displeases God. This isn't legalism. This is I love God. And because of that, I want to live the way he wants me to live. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whatever he sows to please their flesh. From the flesh will reap destruction. That's exactly what happened to this gentleman and his family. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap our harvest if we do not give up. Do not give up what? By the power of the Holy Spirit doing the right thing. Letter B. They must understand that it is impossible to fully participate in God's plan and purpose while giving in to the influence of Satan and the world. Matthew chapter 6. No one can serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and love the other or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now that, that's really more than money. It's a spirit of mammon. By accepting the help and power of the Holy Spirit, they can purify themselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness and reverence from God. I want you to circle that entire statement. 
by self accepting the help, submitting to the help and power of the Holy Spirit. That's the key. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence, not out of legalism, not out of uh, some harsh commandment, but out of holiness, out of reverence. We want to live lives that are holy. This is a very sobering teaching from Scripture. One that some won't address because of a theological viewpoint that, well, once you're saved and you've accepted Christ, you can't be drawn away to the world to the point of not having a relationship with Jesus anymore. I would beg to, to differ. I think the scripture clearly shows us. And my prayer, oh yes, if you're in category one, receive the love and forgiveness, the acceptance, the invitation to be part of the family from Jesus. Read in your Bible, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Here's what it says. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, who Jesus is, which is the Son of God. You're going to be saved. Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So those of you that honestly would say, okay, Pastor Mike, I'm in category one. That can change right now. Those of you that have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, but this has been a wake-up call tonight. Would you come back? It's interesting. Jesus spoke to the seven churches uh, throughout Asia Minor at the time. He spoke to the church at Ephesus. And he says, you've left your first love. That first love was their love and devotion to Jesus. They began to be worldly. They were checking off all the boxes as far as their church life. But he said, repent. Repent. Go back and do your first works of love, devotion. What's that? Love Jesus with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Surrender to the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit when he says, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't partake of that. Then don't partake. Purify yourselves from this world that will contaminate us. Be holy out of reverence, love, awe for the God that loves you. My prayer is if you're in category three, tonight was an on-time word directly to your heart. I pray those that have ears to hear what the Spirit would say would respond. If I can help, if Evangel can help in any regard, know that we're here to do just that. I pray that this has been challenging and yet ultimately encouraging and life transforming. And until we study again together, may God bless you and may we all be category two as we've studied it tonight. God bless you. I love you.